Hi, Carl here, and I'm going to talk about uh, drivers for plasma displays. And uh, you'll see I'm driving a uh, xenon, neon, and nitrogen plasma globe over here. There's a one liter flask with those gases in it. And uh, I'm doing that by means of a high voltage transformer right here and an inverter circuit right here. And both of these are available commercially, uh, but uh, you have to put them together to make them to make them work properly. I'll also point out briefly here how I prefer to make the electrical connection to a plasma device. Obviously, we're trying to couple a high frequency AC current through glass into the electrodeless volume to excite it. Uh, here at the base, I have a piece of graphite that. Uh, has a hollow center and, and this is the high voltage terminal. It's got considerable electrical capacitance. This helps stabilize the uh, system and enable high currents to be drawn. Um, it's sitting on a plastic insulator about an inch high to isolate it from the surface underneath which may be conductive. Um, and the actual contact between glass and the high voltage terminal is made with a piece of anti-static foam it's wrapped around there and is moistened slightly, or at least I prefer to moisten it. And uh, so you'll note at the moment that uh, the uh, um, the sponge is uh, being used for the purpose of conducting electricity to the uh, the base of this volume and allowing that uh, current to uh, capacitively couple through the glass. Anyway, let's talk about transformers. There are a number of uh, sources of what are widely referred to as flyback transformers, although their actual electrical operation varies depending on, on how the, uh, how the uh, inverter works. Uh, but basically they're all characterized as high ratio step-up transformers that uh, have considerable leakage inductance. Um, it used to be common for flyback transformers to exist in televisions, and this was a common source of those transformers. Um, but uh, the fact is, of course, that CRTs are no longer uh, widely available, and hence the transformers are no longer widely available. And it's also true that these transformers frequently can't survive uh, the stresses of delivering 50, 60, 70 watts to a sizable uh, plasma load. So let's talk about some other options. What I've used in the past has been these uh, uh, basket wound uh, pie coils that you find in uh, Glassman power supplies and presumably they wind these themselves and then pot them in epoxy and I like to use these on a, uh, uh, on a core uh, under oil uh, they certainly won't work in air because the uh, voltage won't stand off. Unfortunately, these are not widely available. And uh, you could probably write to Glassman and ask them for them, but uh, uh, my guess is that these are a special item and they're hard to obtain. And uh, so that's one of your options, but it's not the most readily available. What I'm using here in this circuit is a... Uh, transformer made by a company called Chirk. It's a Chinese or Taiwanese company. Uh, these are distributed in the United States by a company called Images Scientific. Imagesco.com is their web address. This is the HVT-01 uh, that they sell for about $30. And uh, it's a, you know, it's not a large transformer, but uh, I will give you an example here of some of the discharges that can be drawn using this transformer uh, as we're running it right now. I'll approach this little screwdriver towards my terminal. That's an inch to two inches. Um, and we can probably get longer here. Now we're two to three inches. But as you can see, this transformer can produce an arc almost as long as it is. So it's a very capable transformer. 
uh, despite its diminutive size. Um, the uh, another company, other companies that make these things, uh, Bob Iannini's Information Unlimited sells transformers. Um, Eastern Voltage Research uh, makes drivers. Um, I'll tell you right now, I am running this Chirk transformer from Bob Iannini's uh, Simple Man or Poor Man's Plasma Globe, which is a circuit that he originally described in a uh, electronics magazine back in the early 1990s for a solid state Tesla coil, and he still sells this power supply uh, complete with a flyback that's actually kind of trashy. So, what I do, what I've done here, I've taken the original core of his flyback. The secondary has been removed because it's garbage. You'll burn that out in no time. And I have retained the original primary, but I have rewound a secondary. It's not a high voltage secondary. It's a sort of a one-to-one -one isolation secondary. And uh, out of Litz wire, nine turns. And I've ungapped the core, so this is no longer a gapped core. And I'm running the output from that isolated winding, the nine turns, directly into pins one and two of the Chirk transformer. Here's what it looks like underneath. There are two primaries. They have about the same inductance, but the, uh, the winding that can handle more current is over here, pins one and two, uh, as it says on the uh, front of the transformer. So that's what we're driving with this isolation here. And uh, the actual circuit that uh, Mr. Iannini has... Uh, has uh, designed here is based on the SG3525A pulse width modulator chip and uh, it's simply uh, driving a couple MOSFETs in uh, push-pull. It's a very simple circuit. Uh, you can find the schematic at a variety of sites online because it's in wide use and uh, Mr. Uh, or the, uh, the company sells the driver uh, he tends to fuse the DC input, the 12 volts, and he puts a big resistor uh, to to limit the current that the circuit will draw. I don't exactly know why he does that, other than to protect his his very weak flyback transformer secondary. The uh, I remove the resistor; it's a waste of energy. And the fact is, this circuit can handle a tremendous amount of current. And it's very efficient when you're running it near resonance. And uh, so this heat sink, which is pretty chintzy as heat sinks go, actually does not get warm at all. It's, uh, it's very comfortable. And uh, I'm running from a power supply here that it's a $12 eBay special. Uh, provides 12 volts at 6 amps switching supply. I'm using that to run this thing. I mentioned my special isolation transformer, and here we are over at the uh, the Chirk uh, high voltage or flyback or whatever you want to call this thing, high ratio step up transformer, and uh, that is what we're using to drive the plasma load here. I'll just give you a quick tour of a couple of different uh, plasma devices that we can drive with this Chirk transformer and this inverter powering it. So we'll go ahead and turn this guy off. Disconnect it. Let's uh, check out a Krypton tube. I know I've showed this before many times, in fact. So there's a Krypton and iodine plasma tube. And uh, let's check out another kind of tube here. We can run uh, a 30 inch long xenon and uh, nitrogen tube. It produces that green color. And we can run flasks, like the one I had before, or other ones. Here's a different kind of uh, different kind of effect. 
You notice on this one we get some uh, concentrated arcs and those little green petals. This is xenon, nitrogen, and neon. And we can drive small tubes, although this, this Chirk transformer is actually very strong for, for some of these smaller tubes. This is a tube with neon and a small amount of, uh, of uh, iodine in it. Makes a very bright arc. Anyway, and of course the transformer, after running for a long time, gets mildly warm to the touch, but we really, I don't think, are, are, are pushing it near its, near its limits. Um, it's a quite capable transformer, and uh, I feel comfortable recommending it to anybody who wants to do something similar. So if you have any questions about drivers, I'll do my best to answer them, and uh, uh, thanks for watching.